At the Wireless LAN Professional Conference in February of 2017, we announced that we would begin doing some how-to videos here at the CWNP TV channel. And these will be brief videos, anywhere from two to five minutes long, that illustrate a concept that's important to understand. In this case, I thought it might be useful to actually illustrate the now fairly well-known USB 3 interference issue. So what we have here is MetaGeek Channelizer running with a spectrum adapter enclosed in some form of a chamber that helps to protect it from some RF energy, but of course not all. For example, the spectrum adapter is actually within a couple of feet of the two primary access points that you can see the energy radiated from here. And yet, as you can see, the energy is not as strong as it might be otherwise. But what we're going to do is illustrate a very important concept here, and that is the impact of USB 3.0 on the noise floor when it's in close proximity to your wireless adapters. So we have here the YSPY DBX adapter right now separated from the USB hub. But what I'm going to do is move a USB 3.0 hub to be in close proximity, and then we'll copy a file to a USB flash drive that's on it. Now this happens to be a seven port inland USB 3 hub that we're using for this demonstration. So the first step is to move it close to the adapter. Now at this point you can already begin to see some activity simply because the hub is located near the adapter. All across the 2.4 gigahertz band we can see this fairly consistent activity that is showing up. Also, what we can see is that if I copy a file, it will make it even more severe. So I have a file that I've already copied to memory and I'm ready to paste to the USB flash drive that's in there. When this copy process begins, you can see the impact that it has as even more RF energy is being generated through the activity that's taking place on the USB flash drive. And so what we can see is that the noise floor has gone from somewhere below negative 100. In the beginning when we first started it, it was below negative 100 dBm. But now what we can see is in parts of the spectrum, it has moved up to slightly above neg 90, around neg 88 or neg 89. And in other parts of the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, it has at least moved up to neg 95. The average across the spectrum of what we can actually see, because we're only capturing starting at neg 100, is about a 6 to 8 dB increase in the noise floor. Now the reality is that the noise floor is lower. I did some checking with another spectrum analyzer that goes lower. The noise floor was around 103 or 104. So somewhere around 10 dB of difference in the noise floor because of this USB 3 adapter. There are some USB 3 adapters and interfaces that will cause 20 to 25 dB increase in the noise floor. And so we're seeing it here visually illustrated, but it's important to know that this is a factor for protocol analysis and also for our end users. So if your end user has a laptop computer and they're using a USB 3 hub with that laptop and it's placed very close to the laptop, it could degrade their wireless LAN throughput by 30 to 60% or possibly even more in some cases. So it's extremely important to understand this USB 3 interference issue for the users, but it's also important to understand it for you as an analysis. As you perform wireless LAN analysis, if you're using a USB 3 wireless LAN adapter, the adapter itself is going to cause some level of interference. Depending on the analysis you're doing, that may not be a problem for your specific use case. But if you're concerned about those use cases, you may want to consider using something like a MacBook Pro with a built-in wireless chipset that works with your protocol analyzer or another laptop that can use a built-in wireless chipset working with your protocol analyzer. But don't forget why you're doing it, even with that built-in chipset, if you use a USB 3 adapter, maybe to save your capture files to on the fly or something like that, you're still going to be running into possible interference from the USB 3 circuitry. And interestingly enough, with some testing that I did, just the fact that the USB 3 port is there can cause some level of interference. And certainly a powered USB 3 hub 
just by itself with no activity can cause interference. We saw that when we just moved the hub without copying a file to the USB flash drive. So watch out for this USB 3.0 issue. It's very real. And now you've seen it visually represented.